Hey guys, welcome. So AI has become one of the most heated topics online and it is no different in the game dev space. Everybody has strong feelings about it. And honestly, this is for a really good reason. I have friends in the IT space that are afraid of their jobs because of AI. I saw a headline the other day about Microsoft laying off 9,000 employees, a lot of which is hitting the Xbox division. And I have no idea if that has anything to do with AI or not, but now that AI has become so prevalent in life, there's kind of this persistent fear now when headlines like that come up, I think, was it because of AI? And regardless of what your stance is on AI, one thing has become very, very clear. And that is that AI is going nowhere. The more time goes on, it seems like every single tech company in existence has to be incorporating AI into their product line in some way in order to keep their investors happy. Now, I'm not a fortune teller. I have no idea what's going to happen. For all I know, this could just be a phase that eventually fizzles out and it stops advancing or people just get tired of it and it just dies out. But so far, that is not what the evidence would suggest. It reminds me a lot of the dot-com boom when the internet was fairly new. And so this is really great news for those of you who actually like AI. And for everyone else who doesn't, this leaves you guys in a very difficult situation. On the one hand, you know, in terms of AI art, people are worried about not just artists losing their job, but AI straight up stealing their content. There's a lot of ethical concerns being raised because a lot of these AI agents have been trained with data without artists' permission. You'll hear the word soulless being thrown around a lot. AI art has no soul to it. And in game development specifically, if players find out that you embrace AI too openly, then they might end up boycotting your game. There's a lot of hate for AI out there. There's a lot of legal questions and that all needs to be sorted out at some point. And one of my <laughs> personal favorites is is that when you ask it a question, whether it's right or whether it's wrong, it gives you the exact same level of confidence with its tone either way, which is confusing. And at best, it's just gonna make you second guess yourself. And at the very worst, it's gonna have you walking away with bad information. One thing that I'm personally afraid of is that if I accidentally start relying on these AI agents too much to code, that I'll lose my edge. So there's a lot of negativity circling this topic. And yet, even if you hate it, it is hard to deny the massive advantages that it can bring to the table for you. It can automate repetitive tasks. It can serve as an interactive rubber duck or a brainstorming partner to hash out high level ideas with. And obviously it's going to accelerate your content creation, whether that be YouTube or whether that be game development, because people are gonna use it to prop up their weak points so that they can focus on things that they're good at. And this is a weird and scary time to be alive. And because it seems very clear that it's not going anywhere and because it's advancing at a rate so rapid, more rapidly than any other tech I've ever seen. We have to figure out how to harness its power as a creative tool without squashing our own creativity in the process. I will say this flat out, and when I say this, I am more specifically talking about the tech side and not so much the art side. But if you are not using ChatGPT or Claude or Google Gemini or DeepSeek or whatever, then I personally think you're making a mistake and you are missing out. But over relying on these things is even worse. And let me explain my thinking on this. And AI is this whole different topic. It's really hard to compare it from something in the past because so few technological advancements in the past had the capacity to change the way we live in such a big way besides like the industrial revolution or the invention of the internet. So it's hard to make a good example, but let's just say take programmers from decades and decades ago. I don't even know what programmers used to use before things like Microsoft Visual Studio and Rider and all those great tools we have now, but ignoring AI completely would be like Microsoft Microsoft Visual Studio coming out with its IntelliSense and automatically telling you where your errors are in your code and handling all of your spacing and tabs automatically a lot of the time. It would be like ignoring that and continuing to write your code in Notepad++. What that does is that makes you the best at something that is very quickly becoming obsolete. And even though you're the best at that thing, all your coworkers and all the people around you are racing past you and you very quickly become the least efficient person in the room, even though you're a phenomenal coder. And again, I am very keenly aware that this is an imperfect example. And I wanna be very clear, I am talking about using an AI bot to help you with code. I'm not talking about AI art here because that would deserve its own video. That's a whole other topic that I have very mixed feelings about. 
So in terms of code, if you are not using your favorite chatbot, if you don't have Copilot assisting you with your code, you're missing out. Most of the time, you're coding slower. That's just a fact. Going to Stack Overflow or Google or Reddit or Discord servers, whatever, it's now slower than the alternative. Now, if you are a hater of AI and you generally avoid using it, I know there's a lot of you out there, you can still do everything you do. You can make your own music, make your own art, write your own code, animate everything, come up with your own ideas with no help, write your own dialogue, everything. AI can still help you. And I'll give you a few examples. Math is a great one. You might be really great at code, but there might be some calculus or some trig that you need done for a specific algorithm. You don't need to take however many weeks or potentially even months that it would take to learn how to do that kind of math in order to do this stuff yourself. If you want to learn how to do those things, that is a totally different story. But if it's just a means to an end, you don't have to do it that way. Editor tools is another really good example. I never really went beyond the absolute basics of making editor scripts for Unity, which allows you to customize how your scripts and things like that look in the inspector because writing hundreds of lines of code just to change how one little component in my game looks felt like a waste of time to me. The amount of work I would have had to put in to overcome that huge learning curve for what felt like a fairly small reward at the end never felt totally worth it to me. And lastly, another great example is just really boring, mundane stuff that you already know how to do. It's not challenging for you. You're not learning anything new. For me, a good example would be coroutines. I've written hundreds upon hundreds of coroutines and they bore me to tears. So now sometimes I'll just throw in a quick prompt to ChatGPT to write it for me because it's just faster. I don't want to do it myself. And last, learning is a huge, huge potential area where this could be great for you. Now I have had plenty of AI chatbots give me bad information, so you do have to be very careful about that. And just as an example, last week it was Canada Day here and I took my daughter down to the park. They had a big barbecue going on. There were all sorts of games. It was a lot of fun. And she met up with a friend of hers and they just played all afternoon. So I sat nearby, but I sat and I played on my phone talking to Google Gemini for two hours. I have been wanting to learn how to write custom shader code forever now and I just never take the time to actually learn how to do it. But I had that afternoon free, so I told Google Gemini to create bite-sized lessons for me and quiz me on it at the end because I didn't want to actually code things on my phone. And like, it was only two hours, so I can't code in HLSL yet, but I understand the basics and I find it a lot less intimidating now. It was really, really fantastic. So that's where I land. I don't think we should blindly just worship this stuff, but I also don't think that we should shut it out just due to fear. The trick for me is to try to use the AI like I would any other tool to help me do what I do better. Not to replace what I do, just to enhance it. Because at the end of the day, your creativity, your weird ideas, your very specific way of seeing things, that is what is valuable at the end of the day. AI can help you shape those ideas or help speed up execution of those ideas, but it can't be those ideas. What I would say is use it to learn, not just to do. Ask it to explain the concept in greater detail, not just spit out the code. They usually do that anyways, but still. Use it to save you from writing a bunch of boring boilerplate stuff so that you can spend more time on the truly creative problems. Because at the end of the day, the goal is to become a better game developer. And this can and will help you do that if you use it appropriately. But all of that aside, you are not crazy to be worried. You're not wrong if you like AI. You're not wrong if you hate AI. We are all in this weird situation where we're just trying to figure out where this fits into our world. Like I said, it's a very scary and exciting time to be alive. Let me know where you land on this. Are you using this in your work? Do you avoid it completely? Or are you somewhere in between? I'm especially curious how game developers are using this to improve their workflows. That's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.